you probably been talked to too much tonight, and you want a silver lining in all this. I wish I had one. For the last 13 years, I have used all of you as a wonderful distraction to what I knew what was coming. And I struggled with courage to come out and talk about this more openly. And that's what I regret. I wish, and I know most of you would have dismissed me, said this guy's full of shit. It ain't going to never happen. He's got some good technical analysis, but he's a weirdo. <laughs> but the people that's been with me for a long time, that were with me when I was on Twitter before, and they started censoring my tweets, that's why I left Twitter. Nobody ran me off Twitter, but Twitter. When I was trying to post things and it never made it there, that was enough for me. I was talking too much. So I said, I'm out of here. The folks that were with me back then know I said that Trump was going to be elected and I was not supporting him. I told you all then, I'm not voting for him. I've never voted in my life, ever. My faith is that none of that shit works. And I think Reagan was the last real elected president. And they tried to pull shenanigans with his ass too. And ever since then, you were selected. Can I do anything about it? Nope. I'm not losing any sleep over it either. They're going to run this shit like the way they want to run it. You ain't changing it. Your vote ain't changing shit. Regardless of what side you're on, it won't matter. So the worst thing you can do is take what I'm telling you and get all worked up into a frenzy and try to do something stupid because you ain't changing it. It's written. It's going to happen. You ain't no changing it. And if you're on the fence about it happening, just wait around. You'll see. You'll be convinced of it shortly. When it kicks off, it gets really fast after that. So I've tried to live my life reaching as many as I possibly could in the way that I felt was the safest. I think that was the best way of thinking about it like that. Dropping breadcrumbs as I went, getting confident, talk a little bit more. Getting confident, tell a little bit more. But I don't have an answer to it. I'd be lying if I said that I thought I was going to figure out an answer early on. But there isn't any. It's just, it's going to happen. There's a lot of you out in the world that would say, well, if, if it's going to happen, I would have rather not known. Just let it happen. Knowing about it is going to be, give me something to worry about. Well, what about your family members, your children? Wouldn't you want to make the best of the time? Doesn't it kind of change your perspective on what you do with your time now? Knowing that there's so many sudden, abrupt changes that are coming, and the freedoms that we have right now, take advantage of them. That's why I bought an RV. I want to get out there and see some shit. Because there's a time coming I won't be able to. Neither will you. Just so you know, I've never been vaccinated. I didn't believe in it. And you're welcome to unfollow me if you think that's a big thing to do, team vaccination. My youngest son was injured by a vaccination, not the COVID one, but when he was born, 
they shot him with something and uh, his blood pressure crashed and he's had all kinds of issues in life since then. So please don't preach to me about vaccination safety because it's bullshit. I had a girlfriend that uh, I dated. Her name's Robin Saunders. Beautiful girl. Healthy as shit. Fit. Aerobic instructor. Fitness trainer. The whole business. They took that vaccination. She took the Pfizer. And uh, 24 hours later, her brain swelled up and her heart swelled up and she died. The real estate agent that uh, I used the purchase of the home I'm in right now I'm talking to you. Her best friend's daughter took a vaccination that was told by everyone. And everybody was telling her, don't do it, don't do it. Now she has heart issues. And she's 16. Those heart issues aren't going to go away. These same things that cause these injuries and what all of you feel like you're protected with by having, having taken one or two or boosters or whatever, uh, they're making it so if you fly anywhere, every country, you're going to have to have that. Don't blame me. Wait, because it's coming. It's already in the works. I don't fly. (laughs) <laughs> so I don't give a shit. There's going to be so many control measures placed on everyone globally. They're going to force you to do things that some of you, even me, said, no, I'm not going to do that. What is your thoughts about that when they say you're going to do this? Or else. You ever thought about that? When it's more than your job, your ability to move around. You ever think about that? When I had a motorcycle back in 2009, I had a visor on my helmet that I could lift up the whole face front of the helmet. I made the mistake of doing that one day. (laughs) Bug flew right in my mouth, and I swallowed it. It was uh, not pleasant. Ain't nothing I could do. Once it got back to the back of my throat, it was was involuntary. Boom. Couldn't spit it out. There it was. And when you're going 100 mile an hour, (sighs) that's going to be the last thing you're worrying about. You're worried about making sure you don't lose control of the bike. How do you feel about eating bugs? Because that's what they're putting in food. (laughs) Yeah, that's what they're putting in food now. What if you don't like to have that in your food? Can you do anything about it? Well, they're making laws to change the fact that they got to tell you they're putting it in there. Do you have a shellfish allergy? Because if you have a shellfish allergy, you're going to find out that foods that you have been eating all along now have cricket flour in it. Now suddenly you're having anaphylactic shock because they didn't announce it in the ingredients on your food that you're eating. That's why processed foods shouldn't be eaten. You don't know what they're putting in it. Whole foods. When you go to the grocery store, at least this is for the states, you ever notice how everything in the middle of the grocery store, in the center aisles, it's all the junk food, the processed food. 
when I go to the grocery store, I only go into those inner aisles for sugar for my wife because she drinks coffee. I don't drink coffee. I get flour. And I may get a pancake mix. Because my sons, they like them. And we get Canadian maple syrup. Everything else is predominantly bought on the outside rim of the supermarket grocery store. Why? Because that's where all the whole foods are on a grocery store. All the vegetables, the eggs, the milk, the meats. Never noticed that, did you? In the middle is where they're herding everybody in to make them sick with processed foods. Blood pressure, diabetes, obesity, disease. That's what's inside those aisles at the grocery store. You probably lived your entire life, you young folks, on Hot Pockets and fucking Pop-Tarts. And you're poisoning yourself. You're shortening your whole entire life eating convenient foods and going through drive through menus, McDonald's, which ain't even food. Let me, let me tell you something. I know the people that make the buns for Chick-fil-A, McDonald's, Hardee's, Arby's, the breadsticks for Olive Garden. And I've walked the floor of that vicinity that makes those things that we consume as a, as a nation. And one of the ingredients that's on that floor that's produced in all of those ingredients has a real big sign on the outside of it. It gets thrown in every one of their products. It's a known carcinogen. That means it causes cancer. Not sometimes. It causes cancer. And every one of those recipes call for that ingredient. Ask yourself, why is that? Think about that next time you want to run to the fast food line and get your dollar menu, number three value meal. How about your french fries from McDonald's? You like how pretty they are? You never see a spot on any of those french fries. You ever wonder how that happens? Because McDonald's says they want french fries that look perfect. So they tell the farmers that grow, use this agent, spray it on there, so it keeps the insects off of it. But that same shit that they spray, they can't go back out in the field for weeks because it's dangerous to them. And then they have to be treated a certain way to get that shit off so it can be sold as food. These are the same french fries when you find them. Six years later, when you're trying to vacuum out your car because you're trading it in to get something that you shouldn't have been paying for too. Too much money for another car. And you're trying to get it all cleaned up so you get the most money to trade in. And you find those same fucking french fries that look like the same thing they looked like when you first bought them that day. They never, ever get eaten by insects. Take your french fries. Put it out on the sidewalk this spring when the weather's nice. See if any ants go and eat them. They won't touch it. But you're munching them motherfuckers down, aren't you? Give me a supersize fry. Supersize me. Walking around with blinders on, you have no idea you're being poisoned. Every day. You guys are making some changes, folks. Some of them more drastic than others. The whole point of being here is learn to live a better life. Longer, healthier, more fruitful. If I'm wrong, 
and you do all the right things, you'll be healthier. You'll have more money. And you won't have to fucking work with Carl. <laughs> That's the only way I can end this one with a little bit of light humor, folks. Everything I said here, I mean it. I don't regret it. And if you don't want to follow me anymore after this, I still wish you good luck. I wish you safety. I wish nothing but prosperity and just do what you can. Not all of us are going to be ready for it. I don't think I'm ever going to be ready for it. I have as much as I can get. And even then, I still don't know. But I guess time's going to tell, huh? The markets keep trading. Bitcoin goes to 150,000. I'm not saying it will. I could be wrong. And I really, really want to be wrong. I want you all to be able to laugh and say, man, remember that time when you were talking all that bullshit? Look how good everything is. It never happened. Yes. Please let that happen. Let it happen like that. I'm okay with that. I'm not okay with it unfolding and me not having said whatever I feel in my heart that I've said tonight and what I've said to my private students years ago. They know. I told them this stuff before it happened. And I'm not claiming to be a prophet. I'm not new Nostradamus. I'm a human being with a heart. And I don't want anybody to suffer. And I feel helpless because I can't stop it. And I don't have an answer. This is the only thing I can do. And it might not be effective for most of you. But I can't be faulted for it. And it'll be easier for you to just say, okay, this guy's fucking crackpot. I knew it was too good to be true. He had to go off in some weird shit. He talked about the vaccinations. I'm, I'm following him. Whatever. I'm not judging you. I'm showing up every day to invest in you. I'm talking to you in a manner that's in a medium that's not monetized. Do I sound like I'm rushed to go somewhere else? Like I got something better to do? This is where I'm put right now. And I feel like what I'm telling you tonight is what I'm supposed to tell you. I don't know why sometimes I feel like I got to do it. I don't know. But I feel better when I do. And when it happens, I'm relieved. I'm shocked sometimes when it happens. I'll leave it to you to decide where it comes from. I'm not trying to be something clairvoyant. I'm not saying anything like that at all. But if you have a friend that just happens to know what you should do all the time and you listen to them and it always serves you well, just think of me as that. That's all you got to do. Do the best you can. That's all you can do. And don't be anxious for any of it. Because you can't stop it. You're not going to change it. The only thing you do is try to prepare your household as best as you can to at least try to make it better than it would be if you didn't prepare. That's 
pretty much it. That's all I got for tonight. So we've learned uh, one approach to trading with a funded account. Huh. I'll talk to you tomorrow. I'll have a video up for you by uh, 1 o'clock in the afternoon, New York local time. Spend your time more lovingly with your friends and family. Be mindful of the time and the opportunity we have right now. Appreciate the opportunity of the relationships that you have. Let your friends and your family members know that you love them. Really, grab them, look them in the eye, and just say, you know what? I haven't said this to you in a while, but I appreciate and I love you. I'm thankful that you are in my life, and I want you to know that. Try to find things that keep you on a positive path, mindset. As a younger man, when I had anxiety, when I had panic attacks, I would be a mess right now. I would be a mess. I don't have that. I don't have any of that. Even though I know that this is likely to be very, very difficult for every one of us, I'm not nervous. I'm not terrified and scared. Like the world was gonna come closing in on me. I've accepted the fact that it's gonna be uncomfortable. And having money and having things isn't gonna make me exempt. Everyone's gonna be affected by it. So the creature comforts that you and your family are used to, try to find ways to accumulate those things. Things to do when the power goes out. Because if things get ugly, people are going to act foolish. And the means of controlling them, they'll kill the power. Can you keep yourself cool? Can you keep yourself hot, warm? If it's cold where you're at? How about lights? If the lights go out, can you navigate through your home? You have candles, batteries. You have blankets. Toiletries, toothpaste, things that you're not thinking about right now. You'd be surprised how much more comfortable if things get ugly like this. Things that we take for granted every day. Feels good to have a clean mouth, doesn't it? Dental floss, it's inexpensive. But what happens if you can't go out and get it? Nobody thinks about it until it's too late. It's all easily obtained right now, inexpensively. So, anyway, food for thought. It's time for another scoop of ice cream. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Be safe.